Hey, what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Cleveland. So today, I'm standing in front of this 37 gallon right here. This was gonna start off as a nice new update video on what's going on with this beautiful tank right here. But we'll start with that, but we have a little issue that we about to dive right into. And you probably know from the title what the issue is. But first, let's talk about this beautiful tank right here, guys. So we have a wide array of magnificent coral in here. I mean, look at this. Look at the colorations of these corals. Absolutely beautiful, guys. So this right here is still the very, very low tech 20 gallon aquarium that just bumped up to 37 gallon. But everything pretty much is still the same, guys. We still have the same two filters on the back. We have a new lighting, but it's not really new lighting, guys. It's one of the old lightings that I had on the previous tank. But other than that, there's no other hidden filtration. Two hang on the back filters on this guy. Light right there, heater right there. Beautiful, magnificent corals, guys. So um, I know a few of you are still on the fence about starting your saltwater aquarium because you're nervous about it. Start back from my first video that I made months ago about how to start your very first saltwater aquarium and then come back and watch this channel right here or watch this, this video right here and you'll see how easy it can be, guys. And if you have any questions, drop them down in that comment section. I'll make sure I respond to you. I'll help you along the way. Don't trip. But anyway, so what's going on? The tank looks great, right? We have a bit of an ick breakout, guys. Um, we all know how that could happen. We all know what happens. If you say it hasn't happened to you, period, you're a liar. Everybody in the fish hobby has dealt with that, but I wanna tell you how you deal with that when you have a reef tank. If this was a fish only tank, I would just treat the whole tank. Um, but if you have your, your, um, your vertebrates, your mullets, things like that, you wanna go ahead and take them out because I don't care what medication you use, those guys can't withstand that. But when you have corals inside your aquarium, it's even worse. So that's how I lost my corals in my 20 gallon years ago because I had an egg breakout, only had one tank, no quarantine system, nothing like that. So I made it, I chose fish over the, over the corals. You know, I saw some of the fish survived, some fish didn't because I waited so long because I didn't want to risk losing the corals. But now that we have options, we have more tanks. So I'm going to show you how I plan on dealing with this egg issue. So um, make sure that you buy copper safe it's, it is a fritz product i am not having a sponsored video here but i'm telling you i care about my fish and i care about your fish as a matter of fact and if you have a reef tank or anything like that matter of fact if you have saltwater fish period i really want to make sure that's using the best medication possible and that is fritz copper safe i'll show you the bottle when we go ahead and treat these guys but do not do not buy this right here it is poison guys i have it but i haven't used it ever since i got i bought the copper safe i haven't used it since and the reason why i stopped using this cooper mean um is because first we lost our first snowflake eel we didn't know that that was the issue we didn't know that it was because of this but if you look online they're super sensitive to copper and this is a very high dosage of copper and I'm not talking about how much I put in there I'm just talking about in general this is like poison the other one is much easier on the fish no kind of no kind of issues no fluctuations in attitude nothing like that this stuff is so strong that when you put your copper in your cooper in there before you add any more you need to make sure you also have a test kit so you can test the copper levels in your water before you add more that's how strong this is. So make sure that you're using this with the absolute most caution that you could possibly have if you insist on using it. If you don't, copper safe, guys. Like I said, I stopped using it because we lost our first snowflake eel. Correction, we lost our first snowflake eel and then we used it again. Used it again. We lost our bigger snowflake eel and a harlequin tusk. The reason why I knew that it was because of this is because of the, the second snowflake eel did the same thing that the first one did. I don't know what makes them want to come out and investigate and see what's going on. They swam through where I put the Cooperman. They swam through the area, they went down to the bottom, and what did you what would you what would you guess they did? Start shaking their head. At first I didn't think anything of it with the, when the first one did it. We kind of thought it was funny because we didn't know that he was about to be on his way out. 
But after seeing that the first time, we knew instantly what that meant. He did this a few times and he died. I mean, within freaking minutes of me putting this into the tank. So if you still want to do it, that's on you. It's your tank, it's your fish. You can do whatever you want. But I'm just trying to give you another solution of accomplishing the same thing that you're trying to accomplish, which is rid your fish of ick. And I'm sure you all want to do it the, safe, the safest way possible. So again, this is the Cooper Mean, guys. Made by Sea Kim. But anyway, so that's my little, little public service announcement on that. I really hope that you take my advice on this because you will not have casualties when you use the copper safe. But using that, some fish are more sensitive than others. So that's the thing. Like we had other fish in the tank, they didn't die. But we did lose the eels, which again, if you check online, it does say they're super sensitive to copper. So I guess the little small dosage that they, that they say put in there, because it's a very small dosage, was still too much for them. And then also the Harlequin Tusk. So if you want to take your chances, it's on you. If you want to do some research and find out how sensitive is this fish to, to, to Cooper Mean or to, to copper, you could do that. But again, how will you know? You don't know until the fish die. And it's like, oh, I should have listened to Cleveland over there at the fish corner. Anyway, enough about that. Take my advice on this, guys. Don't learn the hard way. But back to our tank. So we have a little bit of an ick issue. You can, it's not really visible to the naked eye like that. Correction, it is. I can see it, but it's not visible to the camera. So if she tried to come over here and zoom in, you still may not see it. But I recognize what it. See, he's moving around. So it's on a coral beauty. It's not really on the on a, on a two spotted um, hogfish. And then it's also on our hippo tang. You can back up a little bit, babe. And it's also on our hippo tang. So um, I recognize it. I'm not going to wait until it gets really bad before I do something about this. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to catch all of these fish. I'm going to catch every single one. And I'm going to leave my vertebrates. And I'm going to leave my snails in here because they don't get ick. And also the coral is safe from the ick. And if you know anything about the ick cycle, so basically your fish get ick. And then it falls off your fish. And that's when it's visible. So sometimes it can be internal. I'm talking about external. So you see the ick. You think that's when it's time to treat it? No. You got to wait till it fall off. So they fall off. What does it do? It goes to the sand. They breathe. They lay eggs. And they come back up swim. And they attack your fish again. And they repeat the process over and over and over again. So once I remove all the fish from the tank, and now it will be a fishless tank, the ick won't have any hosts, which are the fish, and they'll die off. So I don't even have to treat the tank once I remove them. I just got to get them out and treat the fish. So I'm going to take out this core, take out all the rock work, all the rock work that I have to take out in order to catch everybody. And then I'm going to put the fish into one of my quarantine tanks. And then I'll put all of our rock work with the corals right back in here. And then, you know, maybe about two or three weeks, I could bring everybody back once they're getting healthy. And once I know that all the ick in here has died off. So I want to bring you along for that process. Um, I don't really, I get tired of doing these super honest videos because I get, you know, mixed feedback and things like that. But you know what? This channel is all about educating. It's all about making sure I inspire and we do the entertaining over here too. But if I eliminated the educating portion of my channel, I wouldn't be who I am. So you know what? If you want to come at me because I'm being honest, go for it guys. I don't care because you know what? There will be somebody out here that need this video. They need to see what they can do in a similar situation and it'll, at least they will have my video for reference so let's go ahead and get these guys up out of here and then uh we'll go ahead and keep going all right so my hands are already clean ready to get dunked into this tank and um this should actually be a pretty quick process fingers crossed so first and foremost what i gotta do is i gotta get don't you know i can zoom down on me baby i'm not prepared for all of that so I'm just going to take out the rock. Do we have any new inhabitants in here that they weren't introduced to? Probably. I know we have so. a couple more hermit yeah, crabs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we also have... The new mushrooms. I don't think we did. No, we, we didn't talk about those. Okay, so... All the way down. We have a couple new... Halloween hermit crabs. We also got a blue leg hermit crab. That's right there. We have a bunch of new corals and mushrooms. We have two new orange mushrooms right here. We have those other orange mushrooms. 
mixed in with some clove polyps. As you know, we have the blue clove polyp right here. We have the fireworks clove polyp right there. Some A cans, I believe we already we already went over that. Um, I think I introduced them to that one as well. Yeah, so pretty much just, and then this um, this coral right here, this was a new one. That was a new one. But um, yeah, so now I just go gotta go ahead and get everything out. Hopefully, I am able to get them back to where they were. And I really hate doing this, guys. So I'm, I'm gonna try to move fast. It'd be so much better to have some water. Oh, my, that's a big aptasia, guys. Look at that. Show him, show him, babe. Come in on this. Let me let me show him. Let me see that camera. Look at this aptasia right there, guys. Could you see that? Oh, you see it. You do see it. It's freaking huge. I'm about to kill that with this aptasia X first. I have to. So I know what I was saying about aptasia X. So it it kept. It keeps them at bay. It keeps them at bay. So if you don't know, Aptasia spreads so rapidly. So what I do is, whenever I see them, just so I, it don't get out of hand, um, that one got out of hand because I couldn't even see it. So all I do is I take care of them as I see them. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Because even when I went ahead and um, heated up the rocks, that still didn't work. They still came back. So... Let me go ahead and take care of this one. Can you can't really see what I'm doing, babe? Mm -hmm. Not really. All right. You'll probably still to see it better when I get it when I pull this on out. All right, guys, so matter of fact, and once I move this one, uh, this is a big rock. Don't touch it. Oh, my frog spine. Oh, my frog spine. Oh, my goodness. Uh. All right, guys, so had a bit of an issue, but uh, we recovered from that. Now I'll just go ahead and continue to remove as much as I possibly can. This is a lot of rock work that has to come out. So that's on that rock. So that to come out. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and get everything up out of here. That I have to take out. And then we're going to go ahead and move them over. I'll be back. So it took a little time, but we got all of our fish. I had to move everything out. So while everything is out, I'm going to do a quick cleaning on it and get everything back in here. But first, let me put these fish into the other tank. I got to acclimate them first. So I'm going to acclimate them while I'm doing a cleaning on this tank. All right, guys, as you can see, we got them over here acclimating. They're going to be going into this 10 gallon. Yes, it's a little small but they're only gonna be in there until they get better and then they're gonna go back into their tank. Meanwhile, our parrot fish is one of the newest fish anyway, so a little copper safe won't harm her at all. So once they're ready to go in there, I'll be back. I still got stuff to do in that other aquarium over there. All right guys, so this right here is the copper safe I was telling you about. It's a Fritz product. So that's right there what you wanna get. I bought it at, say, uh, um, Petco, but I do need to buy some more and they don't have any in stock, so I'll probably be ordering it off Amazon. So that's the other option. You could also get it from Amazon. So we gotta do this quick because I got so much to do still. So this is not ideal. This is not the best option of doing, you know, pulling out all of your corals, pulling out all the rocks. I ran into some issues, guys, not gonna lie, but I'm gonna deal with it, and when we're done, 
you'll see where we at with it. I'm hoping I could get a better scape up out of it, though, at least. Hopefully nobody jumps out and get over overzealous. Self in time. There you go. I know. I know. Small for you, bud. It's okay. It's better that you get healed up, though. You're going to be alive. No casualties, guys. No casualties. There we go. There we go. Good, good. Working with me, guys. You're working with me. Appreciate it. Thank you. And so, like I said, this will not be for a long time. So, even though it's a very small aquarium form, it's better than better with them being in there, getting back healthy, than me leaving them where they are. And 100%, we're gonna have some casualties, if not all of them, because there will be no treatment going on. We're gonna plan for the. We're gonna plan for something like this in the future. Don't even worry about it, guys. And when we. Uh, we, once we get that other method down, I'll make sure to bring you along for that so you also can see what your options are. This is going to be the biggest one. No, matter of fact, he's, about to, he's smaller than a pair. It's all good. Hold on, baby. I need that light. I need the light. Come on. Come on. Oh, my goodness. These guys are way too small. Making it difficult for me. Come on. Okay. Okay. There we go, got one. And then we're gonna do the same thing with you cause you, you wanna play games, bud. Oh man, that's one thing about these small fish. They know how to get a, Hey, from you. Oh, wow. Nope. He got away. Got him this time, though. Nope. You Nope. Get over here. Nope. There we go. All right. Quick wipe down. Matter of fact, we're about to go and finish up this tank with these corals. We're going to do it all at the same time, guys. We're gonna wipe it down together. But we still got so much to do, so let's do it. All right, guys, so we are back. We are about two hours in, but we are all done. I wanna make sure all the corals and everything get back comfortable because they just went through a lot. But the tank looks absolutely amazing. I will add on another AquaClear 70 and I'm gonna take off the AquaClear 50 I have on there and I'm gonna put it on this tank right here so we have a little bit more filtration of what we have up there. Got a, quite a few inhabitants in here. But I'll show you that tomorrow. But let's go ahead and treat these guys right here with some of this copper safe that I was telling you about. So we're only supposed to put five ML for every four gallons. So basically I am going to put in about 12 ml for this 10 gallon tank. Oh my God, guys, that is so easy. 12 ml? Yeah. So compared to me, me over here putting it to the 225 or whatever. So let's go ahead and measure out. Let's get the matter of fact, let's get out the whole 12. I think the top would be 12, but let me go ahead and go to 10 real quick. Bam. That's 10. I want you to see how it works when you put it in there. So it's gonna go in clear and then it's gonna get a little cloudy. Just like that. Like so that's a 10. Let me add in a little, get the little two. The two is nothing. About right there. That's a matter of fact, that's a little bit more than two, but it's totally fine. And this solution, see here's the thing about the copper safe. This lasts up to a month, meaning you only have to treat them once a month. Long as you leave them in there, let it do what it do, don't do any water changes, it's gonna treat the ick. It treats ick, it treats red velvet, it treats all the external parasites. So, this is, and it has this little top on here because I like the fact that now I could just, you know, use the top to refill, opposed to the regular top and you squirt it into this. Anyway, 
they fit. So it doesn't come with this top, obviously. But this is right here what you want to grab, guys. Look it up. Judge for yourself. But trust me, you won't lose any fish with this, and you will not regret it. But anyway, so that wraps up this video for this evening. I still have some things that I need to do, and you'll see tomorrow what I did once I ended this video. So with that being said, I catch you tomorrow, guys. So um, let's get there right now.